Today I want to share a little bit about the story of George Whitfield, as well as a couple of verses from Colossians chapter 1. George Whitfield, first of all, if you don't know him, I encourage you to learn more about him. He's just a fascinating character in um, God's work in church history. Whitfield was a powerful preacher. He was one of the first of the outdoor evangelists revivalist. He went out out of, the, out of the church buildings and started preaching. And ultimately thousands, tens of thousands, up to 30,000 people would come to hear Whitfield. And Whitfield was used powerfully in England, but maybe even more powerfully in America in the 1700s. He was one of the catalysts to the Great Awakening in our country. He went up and down the, sea, the eastern seaboard preaching and um, had just tremendous effect uh, by the power of God, by the grace of God. And the thing about George Whitfield um, and the thing that was um, distinctive about his preaching is that he focused on the message of rebirth. Do you have God living inside of you? Are you a new creation? Are you not just going to church and doing the right things or trying to not do this or trying to do this, but do you sense, do you know that the life of God is living inside you? That's what uh, Whitfield's messages were primarily about, that God used so powerfully in those days. And it all stems back to, of course, God's Word, but also Whitfield's experience and his conversion as a young man. Whitfield had known the Scriptures at this point in his life, but he was reading a book called The Life of God in the Soul of Man. And through that book, he came to realize that the essence of Christianity is that very fact that God is inside of us. Everything else, like Paul said in Galatians, circumcision, uncircumcision, you know, all these different laws, this rule keeping, doing the right things externally, they don't matter. The only thing that matters is a new creation. Do we have the Spirit of God inside of us who's given us new life and is abiding there? That's where I want to bring it to Colossians 1, 26 and 27, because Paul said in a very powerful way this same idea that sometimes maybe we don't fully appreciate when we think about the gospel message. Paul said, I'm a servant to this mystery, this mystery that God has kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is, drum roll, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul is saying the gospel message, the message that God had been building up to in the Old Testament and now is finally revealed in the New Testament is Jesus inside of us. Is Messiah not just come to the world, but to come within everyone who would receive him by faith. That is the gospel message. So much, I think, we think about the gospel as John 3.16 and put a period there that God so loved the world that He sent His Son into the world, right, that we could have eternal life. But we ought not to just stop with God sending His Son into the world. We need to take it a step further to say God sent His Son into the world so that His Son can live inside of us inside of you and me. That is the essence of what our faith is about. That is the essence of what Christianity is all about, is Jesus, the Messiah, by His Holy Spirit, living inside of you and living through you to others around. That is our awesome gospel message.